Welcome to a module on hints and tips of using Excel and CSV files as a data source in ArcGIS Pro. This is actually part two of a two-part uh, module. It is brought to you through funding from the National Science Foundation to the National Geospatial Technology Center of Excellence or Geotech Center. My name is Ann Johnson and please if you have comments or questions, uh, my email is right there. We're going to really look at Excel and those CSV files, but really look at them in relation to ArcGIS Pro. Part one focused on various techniques to clean up the two types of data tables and bring them into ArcGIS Pro. You could also use Google Sheets, but they, uh, that, those techniques are not included. I would suggest that if you haven't viewed part one, you might want to do so before viewing part two, as I'm going to use some terms and techniques that rely on what you learned from part one. Part two will really uh, focus on importing those cleaned up uh, data files into ArcGIS Pro. So some of the things that happen once you clean them up and you bring into Arc Pro, how you other techniques for uh, preparing them for use in ArcGIS Pro. So here is a, on the top is a table, a CSV table, and I, you can create an XY point feature class from this data. It happens to be tornadoes, and I just want to point out that numeric columns are aligned on the right, and I can see the Fujita scale, injuries, fatalities, those are all numbers and they're aligned in the fields on the right, where state is a text and it's aligned on the left. On the bottom, is a exact the data exactly the same, but after it has been imported as a XY point feature class into ArcGIS Pro. And the only real difference is that first column. We now have an object ID and a shape field that says it's a point and gives it a number as an object ID. We're going to look at what happened to the data in one of the columns, and it's the Len column. Uh, the upper uh, table is a, an Excel file, and there's uh, column M is the limb, and you'll note that there's two numbers, uh, two rows that are obviously numeric, and then there's two rows that look like they're text, so it's a mixed data field. The uh, lower one is a CSV file, and look at its limb. It is now all um, on the left, it's now a text. So automatically when it went from the Excel file to the CSV file, it said, mm, this is not a normal uh, field with all the same kind of data. So it changed it all to one type. And this happens um, and you should always check your data that it came out in exactly the same numeric or uh, text field and so that you can use it in the future. So some of the, the, the major issues that you deal with with data like this, when you bring it from a CVS file, CSV file into uh, Pro, has to do with those leading zeros. And zip codes, for some of the states, some of the zip codes have a leading zero. What happens to that leading zero is important. Unfortunately, uh, when they're converted from Excel to CSV, that leading zero can be lost. It is not retained. And so you have a five-digit zip code, such as 04539. It becomes a four-digit number, 4539. Now, if you're going to use that field to link to another data table that allows you to create a feature class with it, you're not going to get um, the data that has been changed to a four-digit number. They're not going to find a zip code in your um, key field in your geodatabase, and so you'll lose that data. So you need to replace this le leading zero, and you can do so using uh, tools in ArcGIS Pro when you add it to a CV CSV table. 
Here we can look at uh, the way you can add those zeros uh, within a Excel table and it will display them. You can see them. So here is the custom tool uh, and you can say I want five digits and it will automatically give you uh, five digits. And if it's only four digits, it will add that zero at the beginning. So here it is. It's in uh, move, the moving zip now has a zero at the beginning of the uh, digit instead of just four digits. And what happens though when it goes into a CSV into a profile? Well, it was there as a CSV, but I bring it into my ArcGIS Pro. And if you look at the moving zip, whoops, it lost its zero. So now it's in the geodatabase, but it's no longer has that uh, initial zero. So the other thing that happens to it is we had cleaned up some of the data to have uh, no decimal places. These were batting averages, and if in part one we looked at it and said, yes, we just want to see the, the whole numbers, we don't need decimal places. Well, we cleaned it up. It displays beautifully, no decimal places, but look what happens when it goes into Pro you get those decimal places back. So that's another thing that will happen as you go your data. Make sure once you bring it in, you really take a look at all the data columns. The other with that leaving zero is lost. So moving zip, yep, it was there in the CVS file. <laughs> and it's now a CSV file, and now it's uh, disappeared again. So we need to replace that leading zero. So we're going to take a look at an example and we're going to use the data from the U.S. Census uh, data tables and it has a 14 character GOID text string and we're going to convert it to a five character zip code text string and have it retain those initial leading zeros. So it's a multi-step process. We looked at this particular um, data set in part one and we cleaned it up. So here is the original data. You can see that row two has an additional header. We took it out and we're going to look at this, but we're going to use the uh, techniques to clean up this data set before bringing it in and then bringing it in to ArcGIS Pro and modifying it. So closer look at that GOID, you can see that it is a string. It's on the left side. It has two letters within it. So it's got numbers, but it's got two letters. So it's classified by Pro as a text string. We can insert a new uh, ID, but I really only want those five right uh, digits. Well, step one, I'm going to insert a new field and fill it using a function. And we talked about functions in part one. So the function here is equals right a2 comma 5 close send. Look at cell B2. And that is where the new field was added. And it's because right, take from the right from a2 the five digits. So if I count, that's the 01007. The next, I can copy that function and either paste it, <clears throat> or you can't really see it here, but there's a little green handle. You can uh, use fill down and paste it in. And ooh, I get all of my um, leading zeros back again. Step three is to save that CSV file and note that the column now is a number with no leading zeros. So going from one to the next, I lost the zeros and I also went from being a text to a, a numeric field. So in step five, I'm going to open ArcGIS Pro Map and I'm going to go to view and I'm going to click on the catalog pane and open it and I'll right click on the geodatabase and import the tables to geodatabase. 
I will name the table and click Run. This will give me a new object with a geodatabase with a zip code and the other data that I have. But notice I've lost that leading zero and it's now back at, to a numeric field. What I want to do now is I'm going to add a field and I'm going to use the calculate twice to get to where I need to be with my leading zero. First thing I'm going to do is say add a field and I'll click data type and select text and provide a name for that field. So I'm adding a new field to that table. And here is the field. It uh, is populated with the title I gave it. And unfortunately, no data. There are all no values. So I'm going to have to use the field calculator to field that data. In step eight, we're going to uh, fill that new data field. And I will right click on the first uh, cell in that field and I'll choose calculate field. For the fields, I'll choose the zip code, the GeoID2, and you might want to look at the expression below and to have a new field equal all the cells, so GeoID2. Click OK. The values will be automatically added to that new field, and the numbers field is converted to text in our new field. Note again, there are no leading zeros. We need to add those missing zeros. So here they are, no leading zeros. So step nine, we're going to right click again in that field and choose calculate field again for the second time. In the calculate field dial box, you'll see the terms there, fields, and I will use, uh, go down and I will pick the uh, field, the zip ID CD field. And under helpers, I'm going to be using a Python expression type, which is dot z fill paren close paren. And what I have to do is make sure I insert a five in that formula. Once I have it written out, you'll see that it equals that zip cd and z fill to five. And what it will do, it was automatically add a zero at the beginning if there aren't five characters. So if it finds that something is only four characters, it will put a zero at the beginning of it. So click OK. So now I have the, the GeoID, which is a numeric, but I have the zip code, which is now a text with a leading zero. So just note that on the GeoID is on the right, it's a number, and the zip CD is aligned to the left, and it's a text. So now I can use that with any other um, uh, geodatabase that has the ability to create a shape file using that as its location. So this is just the stemmary of the steps. So there are several uh, steps here. Uh, we can open those CSV files, we'll change them. You might want to uh, copy and just paste it, do a screenshot off of it, and then you can work through yours, uh, adding and creating a uh, zip code with a leading zero. Thanks, um, my email address is there again. Uh, if you have any questions, please do contact me.